there is so much information available to you as a private trader. And one of the aspects that made a profound impact on my own trading was the introduction to candlestick analysis. During this chapter, I'm going to give you what I consider the most important aspects of candlestick trading. I'm going to light up your trading life now and I'm going to teach you about the most popular way in the trading world to analyze the markets. It doesn't matter what you trade, if you don't know about candle charts, you're missing out. There are three common waves of displaying the data from financial markets. There's the line chart, there's the bar charts, and then there are finally the candle charts. And although there are other ways of displaying data, these three are the most commonly used ways of displaying data for traders and investors. And me personally, I never use anything but candle charts. And it was my good friend Steve Neeson who brought candle charts to the world's attention back in the 1990s, and he did us all a huge favor by doing so. But it wasn't actually his invention. Japanese traders, Japanese rice traders to be exact, had been using candle charts since the 18th century when they traded and exchanged commodities with one another. Let's take a look at what line charts and bar charts have done for us so far. Line charts only use closing prices. These are most convenient for charts displaying many years of data. If, for example, you're looking at a price chart of the Nikkei index for the last 20 years, you really don't need to know anything but the closing prices, and for that you would use a line chart. Line charts are not particularly useful for active traders because they fail to give an impression of important emotional highs and lows being made. Bar charts display four pieces of information. It contains the open, the high, the low, and the close of whatever time frame that it is that you're looking at on the bar chart. Bar charts are useful for swing traders and day traders who want to display the intraday highs and lows. This is important to know if you want to establish if certain price level has been tested. We'll be talking more about support and resistance and testing support and resistance later on. Like bar charts, candle charts also display four pieces of information. We have, again, the open, the high, the low, and the close. However, candle charts, unlike bar charts, employ a color coding to provide an enhanced visual information display to traders. Specifically, whether the opening price was higher or low than the closing price. And almost all traders use candle charts as a standard. And we'll be looking at how to interpret those candle charts and the candle chart patterns next. It's an art form in its own right. And the better you become at it, the better equipped you are to place profitable trades. Candle charts and candle chart patterns combine up ticks and down ticks to produce candles for a given time frame. For example, when I analyze the markets myself, I will be looking at a 15-minute chart and a 30-minute chart. But whether this be a 5-minute, 15-minute, or 16-minute, or 60-minute chart or beyond, all of this is available on our trading platform. You decide what time frame you want to trade from. Candle charts are arranged in patterns which tell us which of the primary market forces is stronger, the buy side or the sell side. And the color coding of the candles are discretionary. Some traders prefer their negative candles to be red, while others prefer their negative candles to be black. Similarly, some traders prefer their positive candles to be green, while others prefer them to be white. To make it easy for you, I have used the color coding of red for a negative candle and green for a positive candle. Most people, most private traders, most investors don't know too much about P-E ratios or factor inventory analysis or indeed several other elements which you experience when you listen to the TV commentators or you read about it in papers or earnings reports. But what people do tend to be very good at though is identifying patterns. Pattern recognition is what the technical trader relies on to trade their entries and, and timing their exits. And let's take an example. The engulfing pattern is a candle bar where the price action measured by the body of the candle of the current bar engulfs the body of the previous bar. 
like most candle patterns, it can be used for any time frame, whether it's a 5 minute chart or a 15 minute chart. What's important to remember, irrespectively of what time frame you are trading, all of these patterns and in general pattern recognition can be used in any time frame to suit your trading style. Take a look at this chart. Here you're seeing a red candle and a green candle. But what I want you to notice is that the body of the green candle engulfs the body of the red candle. And in the terminology of the technical trader, that is often interpreted as a positive sign for the market. It means that the market opened lower than the previous candles close, but it closed higher. It means that those who wanted to sell the market, they're running out of steam, they're running out of power. And those who want to buy are now taking control and they're pushing the prices higher. And you know, this has nothing to do with fundamental analysis. And this has everything to do with what you have trained your eyes to see. This, in essence, is pattern recognition. It also involves an element of understanding human nature. Pattern recognition is what the technical trader relies on for his trade entry and trade exit. So let's take a practical example. We're going to start off with yet another chart. Because the more charts I can make you look at, and the more I can get you used to looking at charts, the sooner you'll be up and running yourself. And on this chart you're seeing a zoomed in snapshot of one of the most traded currency pairs in the world. This is the British pound against the US dollar. And here, every single candle bar represents 15 minutes worth of trading. It happens to be a day where the market tops out at about 8.30 in the morning. And over the next 90 minutes, it makes its way from 165.40 to 164.40. That is a move of about 100 points, also referred to, as we discussed in the Forex chapter, as pips. And for a trader like you and I, it is those moves that you live for. And on this chart, you have two very strong candle signals, which provide a strong indication of what is going to go on in the market. It also demonstrates which side was in control at any given time, whether it was the bulls or the bears. And coming up is my favorite candle signal, which on many occasions has turned a good trading day into a great trading day. The engulfing pattern is a candle bar where the price action measured by the body of the current bar engulfs the body of the previous bar. And I like trading those on at least a 10 or 15 minute time frame, although this tends to be high on certain stock indices such as the FTSE and, for example, the German DAX. They work great as a reversal signal or even as a continuation signal. They tell me exactly where to enter the market and they tell me how much to risk on the trade. As I see it, there are three potential entry criteria, which depends on how much certainty the trader wants in the setup. Sometimes I feel that I want to be aggressively in the market and I may actually enter the market even though that the engulfing pattern hasn't completed. I'm just anticipating it is going to complete. And if the trader enters the market on the assumption that an engulfing bar will print and it fails to do so, well, then I have to consider my options. And one of those op options, of course, is simply to get out of the trade. The trader may adopt the normal entry method, which involves waiting for the engulfing pattern to complete. Finally, there's the more cautious approach to trading, whereby the trader waits for the next bar to trade through the high or the low of the engulfing bar. The exit of your position can be done in one of several ways. But remember, the aim is not to get out of the position prematurely. The aim is to be on board as long as the market conditions fulfill your analysis and your criteria for the entry in the first place. So taking a profit should not be because some monetary criteria has been met on a daily or weekly target. The only reason why you should get out of a position is because the market is no longer cooperating with your strategy. If the market immediately runs in the anticipated direction, as a trader you should move the stop loss 
at first to break even. At least then you know that you can't lose a penny on the position. If a trending move develops, as a trader you can move the stop loss progressively, capturing more and more of the move. Let's say another candle pattern forms while you are in a position, such as a doji, signifying a potential trend reversal. As a trader, you should tighten the stop loss very close. If volume spikes into previous support or resistance, it could be a very good idea to keep the stop loss so tight that you're almost inevitably going to get stopped out, because the market has told you that a potential trend reversal is in place. But remember, a good engulfing setup on a 10-minute chart can easily last a full hour or even more.